Hoi. Dank je. My name is Marijn Tinga. I'm also known, better known, as the plastic soup surfer. I'm a biologist, I'm a visual artist, and uh, I'm a surfer, and I've been surfing since I was about eight. Now, my story actually starts a few years ago, when the first reports on plastic soup started reaching us, about these garbage patches on the different oceans. We were misled then that those were giant islands of plastic trash. It's actually much worse. It's small particles of plastic debris. It's like a plastic mist, a plastic fog. But that alarmed me, and I felt I needed to make a statement because I was stumbling on that same plastic on the beaches I was surfing at. And I decided to make a surfboard from that plastic trash I found on the beach. And I just used a, an iron and a gas torch to melt that plastic and push it in the shape of a surfboard. Now, that surfboard, that statement, was 15 kilos, very, very heavy. And I surfed that, so this is four years ago, I surfed that from Belgium to Germany along the coast. It took me three days to surf that. And I had to get off at Ameland because the board was too heavy and I had a fever and I was injured. But that did give me, that earned me the name Plastic Soup Surfer. And in the video that's about to start now. So the last thing I did, last set September, I surfed from Scheveningen, from the Netherlands, to England. But this time I had a very special focus, a very specific focus. I wanted a measure implemented in the Netherlands, which is called a deposit fee. I wanted a deposit fee, a deposit fee on small pet bottles, to stop that littering of those small pet bottles. And I started a petition. I started a petition to ask people if they wanted that too. And that got signed over 56,000 times. And I presented that petition just two days ago. The thing with plastics, of course, is that it does not biodegrade. It, breaks, it doesn't break down, it breaks up into smaller pieces, ever smaller pieces, which are still plastic, with toxic properties because of the plasticizers, the stabilizers which are in there. And those are then taken up by fish, by birds, by all types of organisms, and by now it has penetrated uh, every level of our food chain, and we are seeing it come back to our own dinner plates through supermarket fish. And plastics haven't been around that long. Your grandmother didn't have that much plastic around. It's only since the single-use culture that it has really exploded the produce of plastics a 20-fold in 50 years. If we go on like this, there'll be just as much plastic in our oceans as there are fish in 2050, by weight. The thing is, a percentage of this plastic spills into our seas, 8 billion, 8 billion kilos each year. This is a, a 2010 calculation. Just to and vision, just to, to visualize how much that is, because that's an incredible amount. Eight billion, how much is that? That's 15 grocery bags, 15 grocery bags every meter of coastline around the whole world. That means anywhere in the world you'd want to t go for a swim in the sea, you'd first have to step over 15 grocery bags just to get into the sea or the ocean. But of course, that's not only 2015 there, that's 2014, 2013, 2000, counting way back. And the thing is, it all accumulates. Most of it actually sinks. And there's maybe five, six countries which are responsible for 50% uh, of this uh, problem. But also in our North Sea, 
we, um, the North Sea receives up to 20 million kilos each year from the surrounding countries. And I've sailed, to, uh, 2015, I sailed for five months collecting um, plastic garbage, plastic trash from the beaches of Norway, Sweden, all the way up to Helsinki for five months. And I did, um, uh, I had a trawling net with me, a net to make samples of the, of the surface water, and also there we found those small microplastic particles. And after four or five months of cleaning up beaches everywhere I came, in Sweden, in Norway, in uh, Finland, in, in Poland, everywhere we came, five months, I became very dispirited. I became, I thought, what, how can I use my energy effectively? It was like there's a Dutch saying that goes, um, mopping the floor when the tap's still open, uh, emptying the ocean with a thimble. I thought, we need Prevention. If I want to use my energy effectively, we should focus, I should focus on prevention. So once I got back, I immediately, I immediately started with my, the project I was telling you about. The crossing of the North Sea, a record crossing, on a board made from small pet bottles. Thing is, in the Netherlands, 50 million, 50 million of these small pet bottles are littered each year, 50 million each year. And there is a very effective measure to prevent that, up to 90%. And that is used up to 40 states and countries around the world. <laughs> and it's called a deposit fee. Very effective. So it seemed very logical to ask for that in the Netherlands, since we only have a deposit fee on big pet bottles and not on the small ones. But how come? How come in the Netherlands, how come the Netherlands is the only country in the world that only has a deposit fee on the big ones and not on the small ones, when it's the small ones which are most litter sensitive? It's because of Coca-Cola and Ahold. They, have, they were given responsibility for recycling and littering. 15 years ago, and since then, they have misused their power to try to, to prevent the modernization of our deposit scheme. They have even tried to abolish the deposit scheme altogether. That's their goal. Now, this means that in the Netherlands, we have an outdated and ancient system of a deposit, a deposit return scheme which dates back from the 80s of the last century. So, by little did I know that by starting, by calling for a deposit fee, I was actually taking it on against a million dollar company like Coca-Cola and Ahold. I didn't know that when I started. I surfed across and I, there was a lot of attention for that, and, and a lot of attention for uh, deposit fee. I, um, there were uh, 56,000 people that signed my petition, and just two days ago, I went to Dutch Parliament to present my petition. But not only my petition, I took a resolution with me as well, and the resolution read, now, I want 90% less plastic bottles in my environment, in our environment, within three years. 90% less within three year, years. And all the parties present signed my resolution, which was a great success, which was incredible. Three hours ago, to make it even more incredible, three hours ago, I've just come from The Hague, from the parliament, from the government, and the cabinet has just, has just three hours ago, adopted this resolution. So, and the significance, the significance of this is we have crossed out, with this project, we have crossed out the way to abolition, the Coca-Cola way. We have 
crossed out the Coca-Cola way, and we have opened, there's only one way forward, which is to, um, which is to a modernization of our system and to an expansion, or the, to expand the, the deposit fee to the small pet bottles. <coughs> now, you should imagine that just one year ago, I was calling up people to convince them to help me to help me cross the North Sea on a bottle, on a board made from pet bottles. I was calling them, please help me, because this is what I want to do. So, if there's one thing I hope this story tells you, I hope this story inspires you to take action within your own surroundings. And that if you see a pub, something you want changed, that you hold on to it, that you go for it with tenacity, and that together we can make a change. And it can start with you. Thank you.